In this video, I am going to show you how you can use z-scores to find the percentage of data above or below a certain value. You will need a z-score table such as this to uh, solve this problem. All right, in 1999, the scores of men on the math part of the SAT followed a normal distribution, meaning a bell curve, sort of like this one, um, with a mean of 531 and a standard deviation of 115. What percentage of men scored above 700? All right. Um, Here's how I would recommend that we organize our work. Now in this first box, let's go ahead and draw a diagram of SAT scores. And let's label it up. So we have SAT scores right here. Now they already told us that the, uh, the mean SAT score is 531. So that would go right here on the bell curve. Now, uh, we want to know what percentage of men scored above 700. So let's put that on the curve. Just put it over here to the right somewhere. It doesn't have to be exactly right. But it's bigger than um, 531, so here's my 700. So we're talking about scoring above 700. All right, so on the graph, that means we're talking about um, the percentage of values to the right of 700 on this graph. Okay, a z-score chart like this tells us the percentage of data that is to the left of any z-score. Any z-score you want, the chart tells you what percentage of the data is to the left of it. Um, now, so first of all, we need, this is uh, all based on z-scores, not SAT scores. So that's fine because we know a formula to convert from SAT scores to z-scores. And uh, I'm going, going to draw a picture of that over here on the right-hand side. So this graph is going to be a graph now of z-scores. All right, so we can really understand the similarity and the uh, connection between the SAT scores and the z-scores. Now, when you're talking z-scores, the mean is always zero. Okay, now, there is some value, there's some z-score that represents 700. Okay, that corresponds to an SAT score of 700. We need to find out what that z-score is. Okay, we need to figure that out. And whatever it is, um, then somehow we need to find the percentage of data to the right of it. Okay, now the first step is very easy. Um, we can find the z-score that corresponds to a 700 SAT score. In other words, we can convert this SAT score to a z-score. Now, uh, the formula goes like this. If you want the z-score, uh, what you do is you take whatever value you have, you know, uh, like this 700, and you subtract it uh, from, you subtract the mean from it. And then uh, you divide by the standard deviation. So that is what I'm about to do. So I'm just going to replace these values with what I just said. So we're going to do the 700 minus the mean, which is 531, divided by the standard deviation, which is 115. OK, I'm just going to run that through my calculator real quick. All right, so there you go. Boom. Uh, well, we really need decimals, so I'm going to toggle that. Now, we're going to do two decimal places. It's very important that you round properly to the hundredths place. So I am not going to say 1.46. Oh, no. The next number is a 9, so I need to round up. 
all right? If the next number is five or higher, you gotta round up. So this is going to round to 1.47. Okay, so what I have here is a z-score of 1.47. So that is this value right here. Okay, 1.47. Okay, this means it's a, almost one and a half standard deviations above the mean. That's what 1.5 would be, a one and a half. All right, the z-score is how many standard deviations above the mean you are. Anyway, um, now here's uh, the problem. We've got the z-score. We want to know what percentage of the data is above the z-score. And we've got this chart. Only problem is, this chart, and you can tell by this little diagram here sort of reminding us, this chart um, tells us the percentage of data below any given z-score, not above. All right, so for example, um, if, the, if, if this part over here uh, below the z-score is 60%, how could we find uh, what percentage of the data is above this z-score? Well, we could subtract from 100, all right? Um, if the left side is 60%, the other side must be 40%. It all has to add up to 100. So just understand, this chart is going to give you the percentage of the data that is to the left of the z-score, below the z-score. Uh, if you want the percentage of data that's to the right or above the z-score, you're going to have to subtract from 100, okay? If this is 80, then this will be 20, you know, that type of thing. Um, so that's what we're going to have to do here uh, because we do want the percent of the data that is above. So we're going to have to subtract from 100. Okay, and here's how you could write this as we continue our calculations. The percentage of z-scores that are uh greater than 1.47, um, that's going to be 100% minus whatever we find on the table. So let's find 1.47 on the chart. And here's how you do it, okay? Here's 1.4 is going to be this row. Now the 7 tells us exactly which number to look at, okay? Uh, so we start at 0, and then it's point one two three four five six seven all right so put that together so one point four seven is this number right there all right so this means ninety two point nine two percent now remember that's the percentage of the data that's to the left of that z-score um, if we want the percentage of data to the right we have to subtract from a hundred so a hundred minus 92.92%. Okay, that is 7.08. Okay, so that is 7.08%. All right, in the last section here, we summarize the answer in a sentence because uh, this is a real-world problem, so we don't want to just spit out a number. We want a sentence that captures the context of the situation. So, 7.08% um, of men who took the SAT in 1999 scored above 700 on the math part. So that's the answer. Uh, let me just say one more thing here. Um, so remember, we off the chart we saw the uh, 92 point, uh, you know, the point nine two nine two, which um, translates into 92.92 percent. I told you that that number is the percentage to the left of the z-score. Okay, so I just want to just emphasize this to you. So. This left side of the graph here, the white side, represents 92.9, I can't write today, 2%. Um,
That's the white side here. Um, and then the left side here, the yellow side, is the 7.08%. Okay? Um, this number, all right, um, let's see, I mean, that's just, let me see if I can do a better job of writing that number. Um, so this side with the 92.92% is the white side. Um, that's the number we read off the chart. Um, it's always going to be the left side. If we want this side to the right, the 7.08, remember we had to subtract from 100. If, if the question had said what percentage of men scored below 700, then we would not have subtracted from 100. Um, the answer would have been 92.92% of men scored below 700. Oh, by the way, I mean, I'm, I keep, I'm talking about these percents, and I'm saying above and below 700, even though um, here we have the z-score of 1.47. Um, I should say this, you know, out loud, I guess. Um, the thing is, the reason why we have the z-score picture, uh, uh, the z-score picture and the SAT uh, score picture, is the percentages are the same. Okay, um, so fine, we found the percent of z-scores that are to the left of this number. That's going to be the same percent of SAT scores that are to the left of this number. That's how it works. Okay, the percentages on both graphs are the same. That's why we can use the z-score table uh, to answer questions about percentages of SAT scores. All right, now I'm talking way too much um, time to end this video before everybody falls asleep.